Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. 2014, 2015. Uh, there's more year ranges that fall into that into that category for this problem. Uh, anyway, that's an X Drive BMW 535i. That's what I thought it was. Uh, for one, I'm gonna show you. Right there is the mess on the battery when you're changing the battery on these things. Crazy expensive too. You got two brackets. Then this mounting bracket right here. Uh, this is a storage compartment that actually slips out of it. You have to get that out too. Uh, this is the uh, uh, liner. You got to take all this out. You got to unplug those two positives right there. They only go back in one place, so you can't mess that part up. But anyway, uh, putting the battery in. It's a 95 frame. If anybody's interested in uh, replacing it, uh, the 94 is about an inch and a half smaller, although it will fit in that vehicle, can be used. I've done it before. Uh, I mean, if it was mine, I would, because that right there is about $260, where uh, the 94 can be had for $140. So, anyway, this is where we're at, this customer car. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put the wrong battery in it on purpose anyway. So, well, uh, this AGM, by the way, you got a hose right there. <clears throat> that bleeds toward the atmosphere on the outside. So anyhow, this is a huge battery. I'm not going to sit there and hold that battery up for you, but uh, yeah, we got to get this out of the way. This this is a monster battery. It's pretty heavy. Shouldn't have to say that. You got to remove your caps, right? But now that's not the only problem that this vehicle here is for. It's a little bit sluggish, and it's got power codes. Uh, what I was going to say actually, this is not just about a battery replacement. The car in general has some issues, so we're going to try to address these issues here in just a second. Uh, like I said, battery is one of the things. The battery never been re uh, replaced on this thing. This is the first battery it ever got. Uh, you'll have to program them, them things in. I don't know if there is a shade tree mechanic way of doing it. I don't know, don't care. I use a scan tool to program it back into the vehicle. Uh, other than that, we've got, I hope, a PCV problem on this car and the reason I say it hope because this is a cheap fix what I'm going to show you here in just a minute this is going to be a cheap fix versus replacing a valve cover uh, especially considering the fact that the uh, high pressure fuel lines going right over the top of it and once you break them loose they want you to replace them anyway I'm gonna pause you up put this battery back in and I'll show you what that looks like when I get the battery back in my bad, I'm not that versed with a BMW. Let me undo the camera here and I'm going to show you something. I'll share this with you because I just noticed it. I could have gone ahead with the other battery. So right there, there is actually provisions for more than one style battery. I bet the 94 would have, would have used this one versus that one that this 95 frame uses. So anyway, figure I'd share that with you. I bet that would have worked, but in any way, we're going to go with this one. I have not make it snappy. There is the plugs that I unplugged. The blue, it's marked, and this one right here, you lay them to the side. You see it going right there? This is the mess when you get it all back together. My battery is dead. So you're supposed to pull the plastic piece off of it, but I think we can get it in with a trim tool. No, I did not damage anything. I just used a trim tool to pop it. Perfectly fine, it doesn't hurt anything. to get my mess back up here. Normally, yes, you would take the plastic off, but like I said, it can be done without it. We don't have to do it that way. Now, of course, we've got to put the, uh, the car back together the way we, we found it. I hate that when the customer has a billion things in the friggin' trunk. When they know they're going to the, see the mechanic, so. But it is what it is, I'm not bitching. Part of it. Now there's these two plastic screws that have to be fastened back up. And yes, hand tight is good on that. Lay that down, put the flapper down, and good to go. Put the customer's belonging back in the vehicle. I'm sure they can sort it out later on, whatever it is.
Sounds a little rough. License plate is loose. So, quite frankly, you want to take my word for it. I got to put the customer's pretzels back in there. Uh, you have to take my word for it. I don't like you all enough to start this vehicle up because it's hotter than hooch out there, and I'm not going to start it up. Just to prove to you what I'm telling you is the truth. This damn thing here has got a heck of a lot of uh, crankcase vacuum in it. I mean, it's whistling. We've seen that same phenomenon on other vehicles. This is not the only one, so no surprise there. No, it's not the un most unusual thing or anything like that, so that being said, normally, except this right here is what I think is the culprit, normally we have to undo all these high pressure fuel lines and I, I believe they have to be replaced on top of everything else. Other than that, we're replacing the whole entire valve cover. But I'm not gonna replace any of that because, and I'm gonna have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, some channel on YouTube has used a hot air gun, a hot air gun to take this apart or loosen it up. So I'm gonna see if I can't get this apart by using a hot air gun. What I want to do is, I want to prove that there is actually something wrong with the diaphragm. If that's not the case, then there is a problem with a crankcase seal, or a big likelihood that there is. And if that's the case, that I don't have to tell you how expensive of a repair that will be. $25 to get this on Amazon. Now so here's your part, ladies and gentlemen. Fresh from the mainland of China, I'm sure. So that's what that is. Like I said, part store zero, Amazon, they had it. That's what that is. At least, I hope. And maybe we'll see a crack in there somewhere. Well, maybe I hope so we do. <laughs> but what I want to do right now first to start off is go ahead and pause you all up and start on the heating process. Just to be clear, we're not talking about a hairdryer, we're talking about a hot air gun. The stupid camera turned off. Um, this thing pretty hot. I heated on it for quite some time, but it finally popped off. It did manage to come off. Woo, that son of a buck is still hot. Oh, let me get it. Let me latch onto it with a pair of pliers. No more latch onto it on the bottom side. Here's why. I will I shall show you in just a second why. Now you can call it whatever you want, but I, hopefully you see that. I can tell you right there, that diaphragm is busted, it's brittle. It has brakes in it. That thing's got quite a bit of carbon buildup up here. So it was definitely busted. I'm trying not to mess with it right now because it is hot. I don't want to uh, make it go out around, so to speak. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let that cool down. I'm gonna chill for a minute. Maybe get a rag, do some wiping. Could blast it with a little bit of brake cleaner. Wouldn't hurt it. Won't have to be clean anyway if you're gonna do anything with it. You're gonna have to keep the spring. It's gonna have to stay there. The very top rim, I didn't damage it. I got some scratches over here on the side, but that's where I popped it off. She is quite warm. So, proof is in the pudding. Matter of fact, now that I look at it, you can see it better from the backside. It's not fresh. You can tell that because the rubber, the black is going on the inside, the rubber. So, anyway, I'm gonna pause you up. Definitely found a cut in my hand. Now this good stuff right here is uh, carbon choke cleaner. You do, you don't want to blast too much on the inside. 
right clean, probably better. This is what I, what came down. We'll do a fit test. That looks good to me. The only thing that I hadn't figured out yet is how I'm gonna seal that in there. There is mixed. There's no, there's nothing fast, and I'm not <clears throat> for sure <clears throat> if the best thing would be to use epoxy or something like that, or just to go ahead and use a regular uh, silicone glue. I mean, there is vacuum on it, so it does pull it, pull it down. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a good question. Definitely got some type of glue on the perimeter. Really? I could rough that up a little bit with a wire wheel? Careful not to throw anything on the inside. I think I got it roughed up pretty good there. Best thing to do, not to touch it with your hands after you do that, so whatever you decide to use, it's not gonna go ahead and pop off or have leaks in it because of the, the oil and grease on your hands. Not really sold on the epoxy. I think I'm gonna go with super glue. No, no, I'm gonna use epoxy. I see this is not gonna go. This is too thin of a film. It's running all over the place. Uh, I'm not gonna go that route. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the epoxy, I think. Note your position. I don't know how that make a heck of a big difference what the position is, but Put it back the way it came. Personally, I keep these here basically in stock. If you know where it came from, you know where it came from. If not, I'm not going to advertisement or I'm not going to run advertisement for them. I use the acid brushes normally when I do this. Of course, the bristles are a little bit too long, so I cut them off. You know, they cut the bristles really short, like this. And no, it does not have to be 100% equal. Relatively close to one to one is perfectly fine. Of course, I'm going to have to mix it up real good now and wait. Okay, by the time it'll dry the whole entire time while I try to put it in there, so. I'm supposed to leave it sitting for a little bit, but since it's going to take me a while to get her in there, I'm going to go ahead and skip that part of it anyway. I'm glad I didn't mess around with too much. My God, it already uh, set up.
All right, I'm pause you up. And we'll go ahead and do a quick coat scan. Well, quick, maybe nothing quick about coat scan, but of course there's going to be a whole host of codes in there that uh, obviously we did not have before. Uh, going to have because I've been kind of playing with it a little bit, so once that is done, I don't know, is it done? It is done, ain't it? Yeah. No, we're going to clear these codes. None of this matters at the moment. Uh, in case you're wondering about the whole uh, battery replacement thing, it is real sluggish to start. I mean, almost didn't have the power to start. But it would start still every time, and that's what the customer experienced as well. You know, she hit the button, and it was a, like a, a real lag, and she had to hit the button again, and then it would finally start up. Battery replacement, register new battery. The reset is completed. It's under the engine. I look for body control. Like I said, I'm very worse with a BMW, so. Okay, before, I was unable to get that part, so now we can. That's a good sign. So that registration is completed. Just starting the car up. This is a vast, vast improvement. Our massive, massive draw in the crankcase is gone. This car is running. Perfect. I don't even have to look at it. She sounds smooth. I don't know if the video can pick that up. A lot of times on a video you can't really hear it, but this thing has planed out. And for one, she started right up without the lag we've had. So I call that a repair completed. Very, very nicely. On top of everything else, I saved the lady a ton of money not having to replace the valve cover. So figure I share that with you. Like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.